So I'm just gonna try to draw out a pink race as best as I can. Again, I'm, I'm no artist, but just so we kind of have an idea about the organ that we're talking about. And this video is gonna talk about diabetes and we'll talk about diabetes type one and diabetes type two. And of course, this was a request from one of my Instagram followers. So here's our pancreas. And just as a reminder, you know that all of my videos, and you'll know if you watch them, they are pretty short and sweet, and that's, that's on purpose. It's important that you understand the concept of different diseases and disorders and therapies and processes, because if you can understand the concept, then what that will do is that, that will allow you to critically think and to build on that solid foundation of knowledge that you have. So the videos, they're not long, they're not super detailed, but they give you the grand concept that you have to understand so learning really becomes easier. So here's my pancreas, not an awesome pancreas, I know, but we know that's what we're talking about. Now, we're talking about diabetes type one and two, and there is a difference between the two diabetes. So here's my diabetes, and we'll talk about one, and we'll talk about two. Now, if we start with diabetes type one, essentially what happens in type one diabetes is that our pancreas does not produce insulin. So we're not producing the insulin that our body needs. And why do we need the insulin? We need insulin to help the cells to use glucose for energy. So type one, we don't have that. So what's really happening? Well, let's say that here's a cell. Here's one of our cells in our body. Insulin kind of acts like a key. So let's say that this is our cell and here's our keyhole. This is where the insulin should go. And when the insulin gets to this keyhole, here's my insulin, insulin into the keyhole, what will happen is that it's going to open up our cell in order for the sugar or that glucose to make its way in so that our body can use that glucose for energy. That's how insulin works on our cells. Now, in the event that we don't have insulin, because for instance, our pancreas is not producing any in type one diabetes, then instead of the glucose entering the cell, it's going to stay outside in the blood system. So these little white dots I'm making, here's my circulating glucose. So the glucose is gonna hang around in our blood and that's not good, because as a result, we're going to have a high amount of glucose in our blood system when in fact we know it should be inside of our cells. And so this is what leads us to have hyperglycemia, too much glucose in our blood. So what is this person going to need? Because they don't make this insulin, they're going to have to be insulin dependent, meaning that they're gonna require insulin for their lifetime to act as this, this receptor to open up the cell to receive the glucose so it's not floating around everywhere. Now in type two diabetes, the issue is not that the pancreas does not make insulin, it's making insulin just fine. The issue really is, is that our cell is not sensitive to the insulin. So remember, here's our cell again, and here's our little keyhole that our insulin should go to. And remember that the insulin's gonna get into that keyhole and it's going to open up the cell to receive the glucose. Well, in this case, the insulin makes it to that little keyhole but the cell never opens up. It's not sensitive to the insulin, so the glucose that's trying to make its way inside can't get in. Or sometimes what happens is that only a little bit will actually get in. So we still end up with this high amount of glucose circulating in our blood system. And again, we'll end up with the same issue. We'll end up with high glucose in our blood or hyperglycemia. Now the treatment for this individual can vary. Because somebody has type two diabetes does not mean that they're gonna be on insulin for the rest of their lives. They may be on insulin if their blood sugar is very, very uncontrolled. But things like lifestyle modification, so a change in diet can help reverse this issue. Exercise, this individual may end up on an anti-hyperglycemic medication, an oral medication versus the insulin. Again, it would depend on the individual and their specific state. So this is the long and short of diabetes type one and two. Just to refresh, again, it's this pancreas is what makes our insulin. Now type one diabetes, the pancreas is not making insulin, therefore our cells cannot receive the glucose that it needs for energy and it's just gonna float around inside of our blood system 
And then in our type 2 diabetes, our pancreas in fact does make insulin, but our cells are not sensitive to it so that glucose is not able to get in. And we have that same high blood level of glucose circulating. Now remember and think about some of the symptoms and the signs that we will see in an individual with hyperglycemia. We're going to see the things like polydipsia, right? So the thirst, the polydipsia. We'll see things like polyuria, so excessive urination. These are two of our bigger hallmark signs that we see. And the reasons for that is that as our blood glucose level rises, our kidneys will try to compensate by dumping some of that glucose off, which is why we urinate a lot. At the same rate, the more that you are putting off, right, the more that you're urinating, the more thirsty you're gonna become. And that's where that polydipsia comes into play. You might learn different things like the three Ps, which would be polydipsia, polyuria, polyphagia, in addition to other signs and symptoms. But here is the basics of the difference between type one diabetes and type two diabetes.